it's the rare bird that you run across in the service industry today who really will do that, go that extra mile, do that extra thing that, you know, makes the customer delighted. And I, I had an experience last week in San Francisco. I stayed at the Hotel Drisco. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. it it's at uh, Pacific and Divisadero. It's up in Pacific Heights. And it's run by a guy named John Spear. And this guy is hands-on. I mean, you, you cannot help see him present in the hotel. And this hotel has a lot of the qualities of a, European, a fine European hotel. Things like the shoehorn that's on a long stick in your closet. Just those little touches that a traveling person, you know, recognizes when they go. And it's not inordinately expensive, but um, I was impressed. Uh, I had a reservation there some time ago, and they have a policy on cancellation. And I unfortunately had to change the, the reservation within, outside the policy. And the woman at the front desk said, you know, let me see what I can do. I'll talk to Mr. Spear. Now, obviously, the guy is there. This is 4 o'clock in the afternoon. She comes back. She said, we'll give you a credit against a future stay if you'll come and stay with us in the, in the future. I said, terrific. You know, thanks very much. Otherwise, I was going to kiss 300 bucks goodbye. <laughs> so um, when I got there, I checked in, and there was a flag on the account. And... Um, they said, oh yeah, well, welcome. We're glad that you were able to come. We understood that you had had to cancel before. They knew the whole story of somehow in the record. But the next morning I got up to go downstairs for the continental breakfast and there's a guy standing there and he's kind of straightening up the buffet and you know cleaning out glasses and making sure the coffee's full. And I look at his name tag, it's John Spear. So I said, John, I said, I have to introduce myself and thank you for he said, oh, yeah, you're quite welcome. He said, well, delighted to have you and glad we could have come. And, you know, I, I, I am not one to write thank you notes of, you know, great customer service or even complain when it's bad. I just don't have time. And so today you get so many surveys. Well, there was a follow-up survey. And I had actually made a note to myself. I'm going to send this guy a, a handwritten note. Well, the follow-up survey came. I said, what the heck? I'll take the follow-up survey for this guy. Took the survey, and I made my notes to him in the survey. He wrote me back and he said, it, so he actually read that survey and he said, thank you for your compliments and your comments and I hope you come back and visit us again. You know, to me, that guy just was the epitome of a great leader. And you could see it the, 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 from the bellman to the front desk to the maids in the hallways, whatever it was, they knew their job was to make me happy as a guest at that. One of the things I see void in organizations, particularly sales organizations, and I suspect it's true in other functional areas, is a lack of discipline and a lack of what I would call a process around managing expectations, providing good coaching and feedback, and really um, inspecting what people expect to be done. Um, you know, we've gone through the last 50 years, it's been pretty darn good. And now <laughs> it's not gonna be that easy and it's getting harder by the day and it's not gonna get any prettier in my mind for the next couple of years. So I think you, you, what, what I saw anyway was some of the discipline that I learned at Xerox about running an organization um, had atrophied in a lot of companies. And people had gotten into high level positions that had never experienced that discipline, so they didn't know how to impose it in the organization. And as a result, you go around and, you know, I've had situations where you know, I'll be asked to coach a, a leader and I'll say, well, great. Um, why don't you give me a copy of the job description, the last two performance appraisals, a list of their 90-day priorities, and any other kind of you know, 360 instruments or whatever that you might have on that person, and the metrics that you use to measure their performance. Don't have them. Really? So you're asking me to coach someone and to perform better, and yet you haven't even taken the time to create clear expectations with a few documents that you would normally review and have with a person. So, you know, what I see is sort of, uh, uh, in a lot of cases, just a, 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 a kind of moving away from uh, routine, what you and I would, would sort of take for granted as clear expectations, frequent focused feedback on performance, and clear measurements of what is it that you're supposed to do and keeping track of it.